And whilst I was getting ready for work this morning, I heard this very clearly. The giver of life is more important than life itself. The giver of life is more important than life itself. Think about that statement. The giver of life is more important than life itself. When you think about a car, a car that you purchase from a dealer, now the dealership knows more about that car. So for example, if you go to, for example, any store and you purchase a brand new appliance, if you purchase a brand new car. Now, what normally happens when you purchase something new, it comes with what is called a manual. Or for those who download softwares on computers and you're now being introduced to a new software, they have what is called a tutorial. In other words, they want to ensure that you know how to handle or how to, what do you call it now, how to maximize on the equipment or how to maximize on the vehicle. So it's very important that we know who we are and whose we are. It's also important that we know who is the one that gives life. Now, the Bible says in John chapter 10, verse 10, the Bible says the enemy comes to kill and to steal and to destroy. But Jesus said, I come that you may have life, L-I-F-E, and have it more abundantly. So in other words, Jesus didn't come that you just have life, just a little flat line, just a little boring life. He wants you to be impactful. God wants persons who avail themselves in the earth, who make themselves available to be used by him. So he's the one that gives life. And he not only gives life, he gives life more abundantly. When we come into the faith as a believer, we get baptized and now we get this new life. The Bible says old things have passed away and it says, behold, all things have become new. Now, what is new about this life that we experience as a believer? We have the Holy Spirit. Now, the Holy Spirit is a personality. The Holy Spirit is a person. The Holy Spirit is not a feeling. A lot of times we get confused and we say, oh, I'm feeling the Holy Spirit. You're feeling, you're having a feeling. It's not just a feeling, it's a person. I remember some time ago, it was Pastor Clive, my pastor, who was there preaching in a Bible study. And there are times when we put God in a box where we say Jesus is in our heart. But Jesus should be taking control of your entire being, your entire body. And there are times we get so caught up in trying to live life, live life to the fullest. Yeah, man, you know, more of a live life. I want to live life. I want to live my best life. I want to go on multiple vacations. I want to travel the world. I want to enjoy life. But the giver of life is more important than life itself. And it also boils back to the point where we have been talking about, where the Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom of God. And how do you access the kingdom of God? You access the kingdom of God through his Holy Spirit. In other words, you can be living in a country. And if you don't have citizenship to that country, for example, if you're living here in Canada and you don't have a, a, a citizenship card or you're not a permanent resident and if you're not on a work permit and if you're on a visitor's visa and your visitor's visa, they normally give you at least six months in the country. Now you become illegal in that country. So you don't have access to, you can't go to the bank, you can't buy food, you can't do certain things because you don't have access to a job. It's like you're cut off. You become a vagabond, you become an outcast, you become, um, you know, have you ever watched those movies and you see people, you know, they have this thing called ICE. I don't, you know, some 
some of you can um can somebody just tell me what the abbreviation of the word ice means but it has something to do with immigration and whenever they see ice everybody is running away from ice because guess what they are illegally um in the country for example in america there are times when you'll have immigration officers coming to look for somebody who is in a country illegally so when you're in sin when you're living a life outside of the kingdom of god it's like you're living on earth illegally and that is why jesus said seek ye first the kingdom of god and his righteousness in other words you can also be living in a country but you're living in a country unrighteously so god is saying not just seek the kingdom but also seek to obey the laws and the principles of the kingdom and that is why there are times when persons are seeking breakthroughs. Oh, man of God, I want you to pray for me. I need a breakthrough. I need this. But God is saying, why are you seeking the breakthrough when you should be seeking the giver of the breakthrough? Why are you seeking life when you should be seeking the giver of life? Why are you seeking healing when you can be seeking the healer? not here to step on anybody's toe this morning but i really want us to meditate on this word there are times we have so many plans in our life we, you know yeah man i'm going to this event next week you know i i booked myself into a five-star hotel you know i have you know i have my own private jet i you know i have a nice car that's parked in my garage but I was reminded of a scripture found in Job chapter 1 verse 21 where it says, Naked without possession. <laughs> Naked I came into this world from my mother's womb. And naked I will return. And the Bible says the Lord gives, the Lord give it, and the Lord takes away. Bless be the name of the Lord. We get so caught up in trying to have a successful business, trying to make ends meet, trying to do this. We spend so much efforts trying to make life when we should be seeking the giver of life. We get so jealous of other people's at how God is using them when you should be going to God directly so that God can use you in the position or in the calling that he has called you to do. Don't be jealous of somebody else's calling. Don't be jealous of another person who is in a certain position because God has something different for you. In other words, the Lord wants us to stay in our lanes. There are times when we want to be like somebody. But God has called you unique. He has called you unique, uniquely, if that's a word. You are set apart for a specific task. You are set apart for a specific reason. And I was saying to somebody yesterday that I know that God has called me to do what I'm doing here because there are times when I don't worry about what I'm going to talk about tomorrow. I don't, I don't spend time. It takes, it takes no effort of mine. Roshane Douglas has nothing to do with what you're seeing each morning. It has to do with the Holy Spirit that dwells on the inside of me. We have to get to that place in life where we don't depend on our own strength. There are times when I think about it, I have this game that I normally play, and it's not a game that I gamble or anything like that. I normally play this domino game on my phone. It's just a life example. I'm giving you an example. And normally when I play the game, when I win a game, for example, I can choose to play a game that, you know, if I win, I will get $5,000. If I, if I play another um, level, I, if I win, I get $10,000. So each time, for example, if I start off with, say, $500, I will play like some $100 games. And, you know, it's free money. It's nothing to do with real money. It's just a game, right? 
So I start off with a hundred dollars or five hundred dollars, and I play the the hundred dollar games. And as soon as I get to a thousand dollars, I start playing the thousand dollar games. So I increase to two thousand. Then I keep playing until I get to five thousand. Then I start playing the five thousand dollar games, and then I start multiplying and I start playing multiple five thousand dollar games. And and as and as soon as you look, you'll see me at sixty thousand, seventy thousand dollars. And I start saying, yes, man, I feel so good. I have enough money now. But as soon as I start playing some games, you know, I was winning consecutively. Now I start losing consecutively. And by your look, there's no more money left in the account. I had no more money left into that game. What am I saying? There are times when we think that because we have money in the bank, it means that we have everything. No. Money can just like this. And I realize that there are many persons who are very skeptic these days as it relates to putting their monies in different banks. Because even recently, I was doing a devotional. I remember it clearly. I remember, I think it was, um, I'm not sure if it was the same day. Um, I, I, no, I don't think it's that recent. But I remember I was in the studio at HGG, not, not here at my home. But I remember one morning I was doing a devotional. <laughs> Look at it, you know. I was doing a devotional, right? And I heard my phone going off. I heard consecutive, you know, like it kept on going off. And I think I even said sorry or something while I was doing the devotional. Didn't know that, you know, like somebody was going into my account and they were pulling money, pulling, 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 pulling money from my account. So while I was there doing my devotional, because what happened is that there was a transaction I did that I sent some money from Jamaica into my Canadian account. And as soon as the money came into my account, not sure if there is a spy or a spam or somebody monitoring my account. As soon as the money came into my account, I just started seeing money just coming out, coming out, coming out, coming out. And I was saying to myself, what's happening? And I believe it was the bank who blocked the transactions from coming out. And then they said, you know, when I called the bank, they said the person or whoever acted into my account, they were even trying to um, go to, a, a, for example, what you call it again, like a supermarket or somewhere trying to get the money off my account. So nothing that we have in this life is really, um, our focus should not be on the things this life has to offer. Our focus should be on seeking the giver of life. Our focus should be seeking God, seeking the Holy Spirit, because it's the Holy Spirit that connects us to the kingdom of heaven. So even though we're living on earth, we're not living as earthly citizens. We're living as kingdom citizens. We're living as citizens of the kingdom of heaven, even though we're on earth. And that is the reason why we have the Holy Spirit, which speaks our heavenly language. And that is why we speak in tongues. And, you know, some of us, you know, that's another Bible study, you know, experiencing speaking about tongues, the gift of tongues. You know, some of us, you know, we read the book of, I believe it's First Corinthians, where it speaks about, you know, rather to have prophecy more than tongues and, you know, that's another story for another day. But what I'm basically saying is that every kingdom has a language. Every kingdom has a way of living. Every kingdom has a certain government, somebody who is in authority. For example, if you live in Jamaica, you know that the prime minister is the one that is leading the country and you have the governor general and different persons who are leading that country. For example, if you're in Canada, you know that there's a prime minister. If you're in the United States, you know that you have a president. If you're in certain countries, you know who is in authority. And you know that there are certain rules and regulations. So what am I saying to you this morning? The Lord give it and the Lord take it away. Let's change our mindset. We seek, we, we go on different prayer lines, multiple prayer lines, multiple prayer platforms. And we go and we seek sources and we say, oh, man of God, I want you to pray for me. Man of God, I want a breakthrough from God. I've been seeking God for a breakthrough. Why not seek God? 
then God will give you the breakthrough. Why not seek God and God will open up the door? If you have the Holy Spirit with you, wherever you go and God is directing you, in other words, God will use what you have in your hand. I believe it was Moses who was backed up at the Red Sea and he began to get worried. He got nervous. There was an army coming behind him. You know, if it was in this time that we're living in, maybe Pharaoh would have had some 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 guns and guns would be blazing and different things would be happening. But I believe he was throwing fire or something of that nature. Not sure what was, what was happening. They had their horses and chariots and they were coming after they were coming with their spears and their different things. They were coming after is after the after the Israelites. And we know the story where Moses was complaining. Moses was there, you know, um, crying. And God says, why are you crying? What's that in your hand? I want to use what is in your hand. And all God said to Moses was just to stretch your rod. And I love this, this scripture. Reason why? There are times we look at somebody else's success and we say, yeah, Roshane is successful. Sister so-and-so is successful. Brother so-and-so is successful. And we look at their success and we want to do what they did. What God is saying, he wants to do something different with you. You are a different kettle of fish. <laughs> yes, man, you are different. So what worked for somebody else might be a different thing. No, there are times when I look at a key. I was looking at the key for my mailbox the other day and I saw, for example, when I went to the entrance of my building, I saw multiple mailbox. And my mailbox, there's a number that is, that is assigned to my apartment. And while I was looking at the mailbox, I said to myself, not that I was trying to get into somebody else's mailbox, but I said, you know, all this, my key can fit into everybody's mail, mail, mailbox. But why is it that my key can open the other mailboxes? Because everybody is different. We might look the same. We might have the same nose. We might have the same eyes. Notice even a person who is a twin, they have different fingerprints. Because everybody is different. Everybody's called on a different journey. Everybody has a certain level of faith, a certain level of grace, a certain capacity. Because if you don't have the capacity, then God won't give you what you can't bear. See, in other words, if you see some things happening in your life, what God is doing is exercising your muscles. He wants you to come up higher. He wants you to build resistance. Now, the Bible declares that the enemy will come in like a flood. But the Bible also goes on to say the Spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard against the enemy. The Bible also says that we should submit to God. Submit to God. That's important. Our submission to God is important. The Bible says resist the devil. Resist the enemy and he will flee. Let's shift our mindset this morning. Let's focus on the giver of life. Let's focus on the kingdom of God. And the final scripture I would love to read for you this morning. And, you know, I was reminded, reminded of the scripture found there in um, in um, 2 Corinthians chapter 4. And I read from verse 16, it says, Therefore we do not lose, therefore we do not lose heart. Even though our outward man is perishing, yet the inward man is being renewed day by day. For our light affliction, our light affliction, which is but for a moment, is working for us for is working for us a far exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While we do not look at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are unseen are eternal. 